As a Greek philosopher once said, the first and best victory is to conquer oneself. Focusing on this effectively leads you and others to discipline. But what exactly is self-discipline? Self-discipline is the bridge between goals defined and goals accomplished. It is the ability to push yourself forward, stay motivated and take action, and you do it despite factors such as distractions, hard work or unfavorable odds. Self-discipline is different from self-motivation or willpower. Motivation and willpower certainly contribute to it, as does your persistence, the ability to follow through on your intentions, and hard work. Today, I am going to tell you seven ways in which you can become self-disciplined. Number one, maintain a journal. Another way of maintaining your progress is keeping a journal to write down your self-disciplined goals and track your progress. This reinforces the positive changes that you're implementing in your life and gives you a record that you can look back on to see the progress that you've made. Over time, your self-discipline will strengthen and you'll be able to apply it to lots of other areas in your life. These are the seven powerful ways to maintain a good relationship with yourself where you are not only responsible for your actions, but also strategic when it comes to taking control of your own life. People tend to fail miserably when it comes to the test of life, but following these ways, you can conquer anything. Let us know in the comment section below if you liked today's video. Number two, identify your obstacles. For example, imagine that your goal is to read one leadership book a week to enhance your skills. In the past, you faced several obstacles in reaching this goal. For example, when you find a book you like, it's hard to find time each night to read. Between work, dinner, and the kids, your time is taken up until late in the evening and you get distracted by messages coming in while you're reading. Once you've identified obstacles, come up with a strategy to overcome each one. In this example, you could do the following. Instead of going to a bookstore, spend an hour looking at leadership books online. Find several that interest you and that have good reviews. Then order them all at once and download them to your tablet so that you always have a book on hand to read. Find more time in your day for reading. Perhaps you could read during your lunch hour or while you're waiting to pick up your kids from school. And turn off your phone when you want to focus on reading. Often our self-discipline crumbles because we haven't identified the obstacles that we'll face and we haven't developed strategies to overcome them. When these obstacles show up, we're unprepared to deal with them and this shakes our resolve. So don't skip this step. As you work on your self-discipline, pay attention to how you're feeling as it develops and strengthens. You might feel free, happy, proud, and energized. Number three, surround yourself with good people. Finding good people who can help you become a better version of yourself is also very significant in your self-discipline journey. The development of expertise requires coaches who are capable of giving constructive and sometimes even painful feedback. Real experts are extremely motivated by students who seek out such feedback. They are also skilled at understanding when and if a coach or mentor's advice doesn't work for them. The best coaches also identify aspects of your performance that will need to be improved at your next level of skill and aid you in preparation. Number 4. Forgive yourself. When you are trying to become more self-disciplined, the biggest obstacle you can face might be forgiving yourself and moving past all your mistakes and failures. Even with all our best intentions and well-laid plans, we sometimes fall short. It happens. You will have ups and downs, great successes and dismal failures. The key is to keep going. If you stumble, find the root cause by asking the five whys and move on. Don't let yourself get wrapped up in guilt or anger or frustration because these emotions will only drag you further down and impede future progress. Number five. Replace old habits. The third step you can take to become more self-disciplined is to replace old habits. When we're developing self-discipline, we're often trying to break a bad habit and replace it with something more productive. However, if that habit is tied into a certain time of day or routine, breaking it can leave a hole. If we don't replace that habit with something else, then its absence becomes even more noticeable. A good example is if you're trying to stop yourself from shopping online when you take a break at work. This bad habit destroys your focus and attention because you're likely to be online for 20 to 30 minutes each time. Once you've resolved to stop, identify a new task or habit that you can engage in when you need a quick break. Instead of shopping online, you could do some stretches in your office, get a cup of coffee, or take a quick walk outside. These behaviors will help to support your goal and strengthen your self-discipline instead of leaving you with nothing to do on your break. Number six. Find your motivation. The second step you want to take is finding your motivation. Once you've chosen a goal, list the reasons why you want to achieve it and why it's important. Try to express these reasons positively. 
So instead of saying, I want to exercise three times a week to lose weight, say, I want to exercise so that I have the energy to play with my kids and work successfully. Or instead of saying, I want to get this task off my to-do list, say, I want to do this task so that I can meet my objectives, get praises from my boss, and feel satisfied with my day's work. When you list the reasons behind why you want to achieve something, you'll find it much easier to get the job done. Number seven, choose a single goal. Begin by choosing just one goal that you want to focus on to develop your self-discipline. For instance, perhaps you want to start exercising every evening, or you want to read one leadership book a week to enhance your skills. You could even practice self-discipline on very small goals, such as concentrating on a piece of work for an hour without checking your messages, or avoiding unhealthy food for one day. Remember, starting small is the best way to start developing self-discipline. As your discipline gets stronger, you can spread the focus to more areas of your life. See you in the next one.